So today we are going to talk about the mean electrical axis of the ventricular QRS and how to calculate the mean electrical axis of the normal ventricular QRS complex. Normally when we were discussing the depolarization of the heart and the vectorial analysis we discussed about this frame and we discussed that the three bipolar limb lead and three unipolar augmented limb lead the lead 1 lead 2 lead 3 AVR AVL and AVF they are placed in a fixed position their position in a, the, a plane is fixed and they have been given some particular number like the lead 1 is uh, having a 0 degree uh, AVF is having 90 degree uh, lead 3 is having uh, 120 degree and so on all the leads have been given some fixed number and this frame is basically applied on the heart and it looks at the heart from different direction and it it captures the shadow of the depolarization of the heart from different angles and make different waves according to the uh, according to its position so from that point of view when normally in a, an absolutely normal human heart when depolarization of the heart is occurring there is some direction of the cardiac vector there is some specific direction or normal direction of the cardiac vector and that is about 59 degree so today we are going to discuss how to calculate that mean electrical axis of the normal ventricular QRS when the heart is absolutely normal and normal the depolarization is occurring normally then how we are going to determine that what is the mean electrical axis of a normal heart to calculate that we will apply the leads we will apply the leads lead 1 here lead 2 here and lead 3 here all the three leads will take different readings and then we will take some potentials on lead 1 we will take some potential of some potential vector on lead 2 and then we will also have a reading on lead 3 but we know that the mean electrical axis the mean electrical axis when finally plotted it's about 59 and the lead 2 which is about 60 degree it is much nearer to the lead 2 that's why in the final calculation of mean electrical axis we normally ignore the lead 2 because because the direction of mean electrical axis finally comes very much close to the reading the normal reading of lead 2 to start with we take the readings from normal lead 1 normal lead 2 normal lead 3 and we make we plot them and make their QRS complex if there is some negative deflection in the QRS complex of the normal recordings taken from lead 1 lead 2 and lead 3 that negative that negative deflection is subtracted that negative deflection is subtracted from the positive and the end result is obtained which is known as the net potential so for lead 1 the net potential is almost equal to the mean QRS for, net, for lead 2 the net potential is almost equal to the mean QRS but for lead 3 there is, there is a bit more of negative deflection and when that negative deflection is subtracted from the from the positive deflection the net the net vector is somewhat smaller than the mean positive deflection when these vectors have been obtained these nectars these net vectors the lead vector of lead 1 and the vector of lead Three, they are plotted on the normal leads so the lead the net vector of lead 1 is plotted on lead 1 the net vector of lead 3 
is plotted on lead 3 and perpendicular lines are drawn from these two vectors and the point at which they come together will make the positive end of the mean QRS mean QRS uh, of the uh, mean axis of the ventricular QRS it will make the mean axis of the normal ventricular QRS because this this result basically is very much near to the 60 degree it is about 59 degree and it is very much near to the 60 degree which is the value of the lead 2 that's why in this calculation lead 2 is basically ignored so to calculate the mean electrical axis of the ventricular QRS in a normal heart we take normal readings of the lead 1 and lead 3 and we subtract the negative deflection from the positive deflection and when we take the final readings of net potential of the lead 1 and lead 3 we take these vectors we plot them on the respective leads and then we draw perpendicular lines and the point at which they meet that will be giving the positive direction of the mean axis of the normal ventricular QRS and the point where their bases will be intersecting each other that will be the negative end so the direction of the vector will be from negative toward the positive end this this vector is normally 59 degree but it can vary in some people from 20 degree up to 100 degrees so it can vary somewhere between this point and this point now there are some conditions which can shift this vector in the right side which will be known as right axis deviation in right side which will be known as the right axis deviation and which there are some factors which can shift this vector in the left side which are known as the left axis deviation so the factors which can cause the right axis deviation they are deep expiration deep expiration that is number one then when a person lies down when a person lies down when a person lies down the diaphragm basically goes down so the heart normally shifts to the right side then finally in obese people right ventricular hypertrophy and right bundle branch block deep expiration lying down obesity right ventricular hypertrophy and right bundle branch block will shift the vector toward the right side it will shift the vector toward the right side it will be known as the right axis deviation similarly some factors like deep inspiration standing up standing up tall and thin person left ventricular hypertrophy and left bundle branch block these factors will shift the vector in the left side and it will be known as the left axis deviation so taking a deep breath lying down obesity right ventricular hypertrophy and right bundle branch block will cause the right axis deviation deep inspiration standing up a, a tall and thin person left ventricular hypertrophy and left bundle branch block will cause left axis deviation how the vector for left and right axis deviation in hypertrophy and bundle branch block are calculated that topic will be discussed in the next lecture
to summarize this lecture we we can calculate the mean electrical axis of the normal ventricular qrs by taking the normal reading of lead 1 and lead 3 subtract the negative deflection from the positive and we will get the net potential of that vector we will take that net potential and plot it on the normal bipolar limb bipolar limb lead and then we will draw some perpendicular lines from both the net potentials of both the leads and the point at which they will intersect each other will give the positive direction or will be the direction of the mean electrical axis of the normal qrs in the point at which their bases will be intersecting and the point at which lead 1 and lead 3 will be intersecting will be giving the base or the negative side of the ventricular qrs so that's all about the mean electrical axis of the normal ventricular qrs thanks a lot for watching the video